Happy Thursday, soulmates. It's your host, Vivica A. Fox. And tonight, I'm back with a brand new episode of Fox Soul Screening Room. Tonight, you're in for a special treat because we have a fantastic lineup of not just one, not two, but three short films for your viewing pleasure. And guess what? Not only do you get to check out the film, but you also get a chance to hear from the visionaries behind the lens. Dope, right? That's how we do it here on Fox Soul Screening Room. And although we're mixing it up with different genres tonight, from a family drama to a social thriller to a historical fiction, these films all pack a punch with their themes and messaging. So play Colt's attention and then we'll break it all down for you with the filmmakers afterwards. So with that being said, soulmates, grab your popcorn, your chill drinks and kick back because this is B. Are you excited about your first day at your new school? Yeah. And what are you most excited about? Making friends and recess. And where does learning factor in? <laughs> oh yeah, that too. Winston Prep? Yeah, I'm Sylvia and this is Beatrice, but she prefers B. Oh, well, hi, B. I'm one of your new teachers, Miss Mitzi. Are you excited for your first day? <laughs> well, why don't you go get to know some of your new classmates while I talk to mommy and daddy? Oh, actually, it's just me this morning. My husband couldn't make it. Oh, he didn't want to come to our first day of school. No, um, it's not that. It's just uh, that he had to be at work. Is that okay? Yes, of course. Okay, go ahead and say bye to you later, okay? First day, baby girl. Okay. Well, that's good. Did you make some new friends? Not really. Well, it's only the first day, sweetie. And I'm sure you'll make a friend tomorrow. I'm Jessica. What's your name? B. 
Like the bug? Buzz. Yeah. Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Sorry I'm late, baby girl. It's okay. Guess what, Mommy? Okay, what? What? I made a new friend today. You did? Yeah. That's great, baby girl. And guess what else? Ooh, you're just full of surprises today. What? She has skin like me. What'd you have for dinner last night? Alfredo, what did you have for dinner last night? Mac and cheese. Your hair is springier than mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Ooh, let's go braid their hair. I don't want to. Oh, come on. <laughs> Hi, Jessica. Are you gardening again? We all are. Hey, Jessica. Your mommy wanted to make sure you gave these out during recess. Do you want me to help you? No, I got it. Whoa, well, this is so cool. Thank you, Jessica. You're welcome. Thank you, Jessica. You're welcome. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you, Jessica. Here, B. Thanks. You're welcome. B, we've been through all these aisles already. Let's pick one. I can't just pick any old one. It has to be the perfect one. I'm sure whatever you get, she'll appreciate, baby girl. It has to be the best, though. Ah, how about this one? Hmm. She wouldn't like it. Damn, toy prices are going up, huh? That's it. That's the one. Oh, that's dope. I'm sure Jessica's going to love it. Good job, B. How does my gift look, Mommy? Great, honey. You did a fantastic job.
Jessica didn't say hi. I'm sure she's excited. It's her party. But we got this great gift. Beyonce? Hey Jessica, why don't we open B's gift next? Okay. Yeah? Okay, I'll take that, honey. Take your gift. Let's do so. Um, are we leaving already? Yeah, we are. Jessica's gonna be so disappointed. Somehow I think she'll be perfectly fine. I beg your pardon? You, your daughter, and your guest have been rude. <laughs> what did I do? Nobody here has even noticed me, or me for that matter. And I think we both know why. Not always about race, okay? Yeah. You might be teaching your daughter to do whatever it takes to fit in, but I'm teaching mine to be herself. And I'll be damned if I let you show her otherwise. <laughs> Who wants cake? I'm sorry, baby girl. I know you're disappointed. I thought your gift was beautiful, and so are you. You understand? Everything about you is magnificent. And don't you ever let anyone say otherwise. If they can't see it, you don't need them. And let's go get some of our own ice cream.
baby. You want to play? Nah, I'm good. Here with us tonight is the man behind the lens, executive producer and director, Nick Brooks. Hey there, Nick. Welcome to Fox Soul Screening Room. <laughs> hey, Vivica, how you doing? I am doing excellent, excellent. We're so glad that you're here with us tonight. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Where are you from? So I'm from DC originally, uh, out here in Los Angeles now. Oh, oh, you in LA now. You done moved yeah, out a... west. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, graduated from school last year, so I, you know, I'll, I'll here permanently now. Where'd you graduate from? I went to USC. Oh, okay, USC. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So listen, there were so many stereotypes that were woven into the fabric of this film. Where did you get the whole motivation to tell that type of story and to create it that way? Well, uh, the story came from a colleague of mine. Her name is Morgan Jefferson. She was the writer of the film. Very talented writer. She's a black woman, and this was an experience of hers. You know, uh, she went to school and. She was one of the few black kids in her class growing up. And because of that, she had to deal with rejection a lot of the time. And so me, I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm black and, you know, I deal with rejection all the time, especially going through, you know, predominantly white spaces. So for me, it was just important to, to tell a story that, that highlighted rejection um, and showed a young black woman accepting herself for who she was. Now, at a young age, your your character in the film, B, she was mm -hmm. able to understand that she wouldn't be liked by everyone. At what yeah, age yeah. did you learn that Bible lesson? Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm in my yeah. 50s and I just realized <laughs> I ain't going to even lie. I was like, everybody ain't got to like me and I ain't going to like everybody. And yeah. guess what? It's OK. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when did you learn I, that lesson? To be honest, I'm, I'm still learning it as well. You know what I'm saying? That's a tough lesson. To, that's a tough lesson to learn because we all again, we all want to be accepted. We all want to be validated. But, you know, in, in Hollywood, like I said, you know, I went to USC. So it's like mm. <laughs> it's, it's somebody. You know what I'm saying? So it's like sometimes it's tough to be accepted when you're trying to tell your story. You're trying to you're trying to pitch your script to the to this professor and you're like one of three black kids in a class and nobody really no. gets it. I'm still learning to be cool with not being accepted by everybody. And sometimes it's your peers. Sometimes it's other black people, you know, and, and things and, and things get clicking. And you're like, all right, well, all right, cool. I, I don't fit there. And so it's just a process, uh, constantly learning. And, you know, B, who's played by Genesis White, shout out to the Genesis, um, it's all about being able to affirm yourself, right? And that's why, you know, that's why representation is so important, which, you know, one of the, the, the strong beats in, in B is when she sees that image of a, of, of a black woman that looks like her in this magazine. And she's like, she's affirmed, right? And so that's yes. why representation is so important so that we put different types of black people you know, on screen and 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 affirm all of us, all all parts of the diaspora. You know, I got to tell you, young man, it's a pleasure speaking with you, and I look Thank forward you. to Thank seeing you. what you got next. And tell you what, call me if you you know got, got part of me <laughs> up in there. Okay. Absolutely. Let's All connect, right. please. And All I right. and I love you and everything you do. And, and thank you again for the opportunity. You're welcome, Nick. And thank you so much <laughs> on behalf of Fox Soul Screening Room. Best way. Peace. Okay, darlings, we got to take a quick break, but that gives you just enough time to refill your glasses, call a friend or family, and tell them to tune in. We'll be right back. So, suspenseful is the best way to describe this next film. So get ready to be sitting on the edge of your seats. Soulmates, together, let's check out The Erasure. No, they're in there. Go away. There's no one else in here. We know she's in there. You're not getting away this year, Cheryl. Officer, there's no one in the house besides me. My mom isn't here anymore. Listen, boy, I know you're hiding her in there. Where is she? Please, just leave. See you bros later. Later, man. Hey, Shayna, what's poppin'? Hi, Mr. Strauss. My name's actually pronounced Shawnee. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you excited about the school dance this Friday? I hired the DJ. He'll be playing straight bangers all night. 
Uh, no, I won't be attending. You probably don't have any idea about this, but this weekend is the erasure? Yeah, of course I know. I read an article about some of the bodies they found from last year's erasure. I stay woke. Yeah, and that's why my parents want me to stay home this weekend. Plus, the school year's just started, and I don't really have anyone to go with, so... So that new brother on the basketball team? You get hit him up. I've seen you guys hanging out. Besides, it's not like the alt-right will be in Fontier Hills looking for someone like you. It's okay, Mr. Strauss. I don't expect you to understand. So, Mr. Strauss, Shawnee, you ready to go? Josh, my man, what's happening? <sighs> Mr. Strauss is so weird. He's like, when keeping it real goes wrong. <laughs> yeah, he is too woke. He pretends to care about the struggles of black women just because he read one book on Asata Shakur. I wouldn't expect him to understand anything about their issue. You know, guys like him don't really give a fuck about what's going on with us. Mr. Strauss is just so frustrating. He swears I'm untouchable out here. The all right goes for all sisters, not just the one in the hood. Hold on, hold on. Did Shawnee Jackson just say sister? <laughs> wow. He must have really got you all set. What's that supposed to mean? I mean, you're just always so proper. And you've never stepped foot outside of Frontier Hills. Sometimes I have to remind myself you're down. Oh, whatever, Joshua. <laughs> No, but seriously, the erasure last year was crazy. That's why me and my mom moved out here. I know it's a safe zone, so we'll be all right. Maybe at school, but not out there. True, true. So what's your dad say about you coming to the dance with me? Listen, I really want to go to the dance with you. My mom said maybe, but my dad's still not on board. All right, well, I'll call you later then. Mm -hmm. See you later, Josh. Hey, Lene, I know you told me not to come back for another two weeks, but I felt some pain. Do you have pain in the same place? Yes, just the same cramp in the exact place I felt with the last pregnancy. I just finally want to meet our rainbow baby, Braxton. I think Braxton is such a nice name. I take it that was Carlton's vote this time. I have a great feeling about this lucky baby number four. In fact, I have some good news to share. Girlfriend, don't hold out. Tell me what's going on. Well, as of Monday, I will be an official member of the board of directors. Shut up! I didn't even know they considered your kind for those spots. That is a big deal. Yes, it is a big deal. I'll be the first. Wow, I don't even know what to say. Wait, this new title won't make you too busy for us, right? No, of course not. I'll be with you every step of the way. All you have to do is reduce your stress. Oh. Well, there has been something on my mind that's stressing me out, like, big time. What's wrong? I mean, we have excellent therapists for early motherhood. You know, I can get you an appointment. No, 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 it's not about me. I'm worried about you. Why? Uh, I heard about this annual event on Facebook called The Erasure. And in the article, they said that every year for one weekend, this unknown group of people takes black women and little girls and their families just don't know where they are and no one ever hears from them again. I'm very aware of the erasure and my heart breaks for them. But Sally, I live in Frontier Hills. People in my neighborhood are untouchable. Okay, that makes me feel so much better. I need you to be safe. We need you to be safe. I don't trust any of the other doctors here. I think you'll be fine. Just get some rest and call me if anything happens. Hey, your mom. Where you at? Hey, baby, I'm in the living room. You going to the dance tonight? Woo, boy, stop and look at you. You sure y'all gonna be all right tonight? I, I really wanna go to the dance, but I'll stay here if y'all need me to. I told you not to worry about us this year. Nobody can get us out here. I want you to go out and enjoy yourself tonight. Just don't feel right leaving. Plus, I don't, I don't think Shawnee's parents are gonna let her go out anyway. <laughs> we only been at this school a couple months and you already got yourself a little girlfriend. No. Nah, you move fast, don't you? It's not that. <laughs> She's just feeling the kid. What can I say? Well, I spoke to Shawnee's mom, Miss Jackson. Wait, what'd she say? And she said, if you agree to bring her home before 11.30, you can take her. Um, uh, mom, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Go! All right. Get out of here. Lene. Lene, are you there? I'm having bad cramps and I'm in so much pain. 
Okay, Sally, tell me exactly what you're experiencing. You look pretty good yourself. Mm, how good? Like, might be Jordan good or like Quavo good? Mm, I'd say you're definitely at a Quavo level. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm looking good. Yeah. You too. Thank you. Come on, let's dance. I need to leave now for your parents. You don't want to get in trouble with them. Yeah, my dad said 11.30 sharp. No, he don't play. No. Uh, let me just go talk to my friends real quick, and then we can leave. OK. I told you I'll get her and be back at 2400 sharp. You need to get back here now, Strauss. And that's in order. We can't be in the frontier hills for more than an hour. You know the rules. Trust me, this one's important. We can breed her for years. Get out of there now! Your parents let you out tonight. Oh, hi, Mrs. Strauss. Yeah, I'm not staying for the whole night, though. Wow, this dress looks really good on you. Your date just left you here all night? Um, yeah, just waiting for Josh. What's up, Mr. Strauss? What are you doing out here? Oh, hey, my homeboy Josh. Just escorting Shawnee to the whip. Uh, okay, uh, well, I got it from here. Yeah, man, she's all yours. Cool, you ready to go? Sorry, it took so long. It's okay, let's just leave. could to fight them off. Where is she? She made a deal. Leave us alone for 10 more erasures. In, in place of her. No, no, no. I, I gotta get it back. I, I, I can't let them take her away from me. It's, it's my fault. Mrs. Gates, where is Lene? Sorry, Dr. Roberts is no longer with us. But don't panic, stress isn't good for the baby. Excuse me, no. No, 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 no one knows his pregnancy like she does. She has been with me through every miscarriage. Mrs. Gates, there is no reason to worry. I've been practicing for much longer than she has, and I'm well qualified to take care of that delivery. I mean, no offense, but I need her. Why don't you know where she is? 
What happened to her? I have no more information. We should call the police or do something about her missing. You, you can't tell me that she's just gone. Lene left during the erasure. And you know the rules. No media coverage and the police will not get involved. This is not okay. Honestly, she's in a much better place. She took my spot on the board. I've been practicing for much longer than she has with expecting mothers. Trust me. You're in good hands. Now, lie back so I can take your vitals. My goodness, my heart was pounding so fast during that film. Whew, okay, y'all. But now that my pulse has normalized to a more regular pace, let's welcome in writer and director Akila Blair and producer Vita Esperanza Amore. How are you ladies doing tonight? Hello, hello, doing well. Excellent. Welcome to Fox yes. Soul Screening Room, welcome. girlfriends. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Miss Vivica. You are so welcome. So tell me, how long have you two ladies been working together? So we met at USC um, in undergrad. So we've known each other for about maybe going on eight or nine years now. Uh, we met, we were part of the USC band and we connected there. And then we both developed our passion for filmmaking. And here we are working together. I love it. Now, Akila, you have a passion for both filmmaking and social justice. And it seems that those two went hand in hand in making of the film. Tell us more about why this story, um, why that was so important to you and why it was so important to get that message across. Yes, so I was inspired by so many cases about missing Black women and girls in the U.S., not only Black women, but also women of color. And I decided I didn't want to just show up to the protests and the rallies. I didn't want to solely post on Twitter, Instagram, other social medias. I wanted to use my art and my talents and my abilities to spread the story in with my art. You know, I think it's so easy to fall into using our phones and our co you know computers and stuff to spread these messages, but it's all about our art. That's a talent too, and we must share it. According to the data, 64,000 Black women go missing every year in the United States, and only a fraction of those cases are investigated. Now, that's, that, that fact is just horrifying to me. What can we do as a society to bring more awareness to this cause, do you feel, Vita? Absolutely. I mean, I feel like, and, and just to go off of what Akilah was saying, I'm from Washington, D.C. myself, so when we initially, uh, or when Akilah initially wrote this script, it was really about um, you know, inspired by that particular incident where the, you know, we're finding our girls in DC. And so for me, that's what drew me to the project. But I think that, you know, we need to really dig deeper and one, get ourselves educated about where is this, where is this problem stemming from, right? Is it stemming from the police system, how things are just sort of like ignored and when people go missing, is it stemming from, you know, um, sex trafficking? Is it stemming from, you know, other types of things? We need to find the root of the issue, right? Um, but then also just make sure that people in our community and people beyond our community uh, are in solidarity and that we really know what's going on here. Because like you said, it's extremely, um, it's disconcerting and it's tragic for sure. I mean, that number, 64,000, I mean, that's huge. Where did you ladies go for the research to find those facts out? So upon doing research, it was actually really difficult because whenever someone, especially a woman, goes missing, there's one article that's posted about it and then you don't see any more information from the media. So you never know mm -hmm. if they're still found or anything like that. So what was so important a few years back with the missing girls in D.C. is that folks got on Twitter and started hashtagging DCPD. So they contacted the DC police department. So once they were put on blast on Twitter, then of course they start doing their job. And out of those 16 women and girls that were missing, eight of them were found. So it dawned on me, what happened if the police department actually did their job in the beginning to find these girls and they had a little more publicity and a few more articles and they were on the news and this was taken more seriously, would they have been able to find all 16 girls instead of just eight? Gotcha. Ladies, we want to thank you so much for hanging with me tonight on Foxhole Screening Room. It was an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Soulmates, we hope that you enjoyed the erasure and that hopefully it brought just a little bit more awareness to the issues that were brought to light. Be careful out there.
Okay, darlings, we have to take one last break. So stick around and we'll be right back with another film. All right, soulmates, this next film had me a little angry in the beginning, but then I had to remember that this was set a long time ago and things have now changed. But way back when, there was a time when the color of our skin prevented us from even being invited to the table. This next film begs the question, how far would you go for love? Hmm? I present to you, Mart. Mrs. Baldwin? No, no, please don't. You have something that can help me? This is what you need. It'll cost you. I've got money. It'll cost you more than that. I've done it once. What's a little more gonna cost? I've seen a lot of women come through here. All of them looking for something different. I see you, baby. And a little vial of nothing ain't gonna help that. Not this time around. Beautiful. Sorry, the first time they see you, it'll be like this. Are you ready? I gotta admit, when Mr. Freeman told us we were getting a new doctor down here in the department. I was weary. Uh, we get a lot of guys from the coast coming through here thinking they got a clean shop. Like we something they gotta fix. Not you. Thank you. I don't think there's anything that needs fixing. <laughs> Y'all have been so unbelievably welcoming. I know Georgina feels the same way. Absolutely. You both born up in Long Island? I, I was. Hey, you weren't Georgina? No. Born and raised in North Carolina. Moved to Bethpage to take care of my aunt. And I met her. North Carolina. Huh. You know, you have such dark features. Hmm. Don't she look dark to you, Sable? I don't know, Mr. Montgomery. Well, take a look at her. Go on now. So, uh, just North Carolina? Just North Carolina. My great-grandfather came over from Italy. Maybe it's the Mediterranean blood that you're seeing. Yeah. That must be it. I see a little bit in the eyes. We don't get so many Italians in this neighborhood, do we, darling? You know, I have a friend out near Bethpage. We went to school together. I mentioned your name to him when I heard you were coming out west. <laughs> it's funny. He knew who you were right away. That right. Hmm. Oh, what was it he said? Oh, that's right. 
the nigger lover. Excuse me? He called you the nigger lover. <laughs> Must have got his information wrong, though. Said Al Davis from Beth Page he knew had a nigger wife. But you're Italian. Isn't that what you said, darling? That's what I said. That's good. Because people around here don't take too kindly to blacks and whites being together in the Christian way. Where are you going, son? It's lovely. Hope we can do it again sometime under less hostile circumstances. gonna protect me. You have a lot more than just me to protect now. How are you feeling? You know, I wish I knew where you got that cream from. You can't know that. How can I help? I hate seeing you like this. I know you do. You want to do anything for you, right? What's gonna happen 
when the Lord brings his baby into the world and he looks like me. Here to discuss that incredibly well-made film is the beautiful and talented Courtney LaFleur. Hey, Courtney, welcome to Fox Soul Screening Room. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. What was your motivation for creating this film? Well, I first got the idea for this film for um, from a short film I watched and I read a book. It was called The Birthmark by Nathaniel Hawthorne. And I read that book when I was like 16. So once I started doing film, I'm like, OK, this is a book that I want to adapt and remake into a short film. And that's what I did. Mark showed us that behind every good man is a strong woman holding him up. What led you to make the decision for Georgina to pack up her bags and leave? It came from you have to choose yourself. I have this mantra of always reserve something for yourself. And that's something that I wanted to portray in the film that she loved him. She loved her community. She was willing to do, obviously, the unthinkable for him. But at the end of the day, she had to choose herself and she has to choose her child. And that's why I wanted to portray that and then find her strength. So what do you think would have happened if Georgina chose to stay? Good question. I think that she would have made it work like so many relationships. Sometimes we stay in things and we make them work. Um, but I don't think she would have been fulfilled to her pure happiness. Agreed. I love the quote at the end by Nella Larson. It hurt. It hurt like hell, but it didn't matter if no one knew. Can you share a bit more on who Nella Larson is and the decision uh, that you used to use that quote? Obviously, I wasn't born in 1961, so I have no idea how it was to be a Black woman then. So I decided to do some research on passing, and that book um, was written by Nella Larson, and it was called Passing, and it had different stories of Black men and women during those times and what they went through. And that was a quote, quote out of the whole book that stood out to me. It just resonated with me. And it's like, I have to put this in there because I think it can relate to our lives now and whatever we're doing. Is the struggle worth it if nobody knows? If we don't keep going, then the, the history will repeat itself. So that's why I added that in there. And hopefully it was a good, um, nice little token for everyone to take at the end. I've enjoyed talking with you, Courtney. I'm rooting for your success. I want to see you go all the way to the top, young lady. Soulmates, I hope that you enjoyed Marked just as much as I did. Courtney, thank you so much for joining us on Fox Soul Screening Room, and we'll be looking forward to your next project. Go, Courtney. Thank you. All right, Soulmates, I hope you enjoyed our three films on this week's episode of Fox Soul Screening Room. A huge shout out to our creatives that I had the privilege of speaking with this evening. For full episodes, behind the scenes content, and more info on Fox Soul Screening Room, as well as our other shows, be sure to check us out on YouTube, Tubi, or foxo.tv. And speaking of, for all of you filmmakers out there, don't forget to submit your short films to our website for a chance to have your work showcased on a future episode. If you brought the script to life, we'd love to help you share it with the world. And for our soulmates, I'll see you again next week, same time, same place for another round of Black excellence and entertainment. Okay, darlings, bye for now. <laughs>